Hello my fellow book addicts, Megan here and time for another book review. Today I'm going to be talking about The Wicked King by Holly Black and this is book two in the Folk of the Air series. I was so, so, so excited to get my hands on this book when it came out. I... <laughs> this was probably one of my top two most anticipated releases for 2019. It's actually tied right up there with the next Legends of the First Empire book by Michael J. Sullivan. It's like very close tie. I devoured this book when I first got it. And this review would have been up sooner, but for some reason some tech issues popped up and I lost the footage somehow. So I wanted to reread it before I re-reviewed it because I want to be sure that my review is accurate and that I'm not missing out on anything important. So yeah, I've read this at least twice since it came out. And since it came out like beginning of January, it hasn't been that long. It's been like a month and I've already read it twice. Which for me is rare. I usually wait a little longer between rereads for anything, but just I enjoyed it this second time around just as much as the first. And and this was a bit of a roller coaster for me, just the things that had happened I did not expect and just oh my god it was good. We pick up roughly five months after the events in the first book. Cardin is High King and Jude is ruling from behind the scenes since she has Cardin under her control for a, a year and a day. So she is trying so hard to do things properly while trying to like keep her control over Karnan hidden, trying to keep Karnan from doing anything overly stupid, trying to think of a way to extend her control over Karnan for a bit longer because the whole reason she has Karnan ruling and she's ruling behind him is to keep Oak safe, to give him a chance at a childhood, a childhood she did not have. The kid isn't that old and one year's difference isn't going to make that much of a difference. So she is just struggling to juggle all these different tasks. And naturally, since we wouldn't have that much more of an interesting story otherwise, things get real. That is the best way I have to describe things. And oh my god, the only thing I hate about reading new releases like right after they come out is the fact that you have to wait a whole nother year for the next book. And after I finished The Cruel Prince, I desperately wanted to get my hands on this. I thought my need and desperation for the next book was bad last year after The Cruel Prince. I knew nothing. I knew nothing. The need for The Queen of Nothing is so intense. I'm just like, what am I going to do with myself for another year? Just. This was a good sequel. It is a very enjoyable sequel in my opinion and I very much look forward to how Holly wraps things up in the third and final book next year. And there's so much I want to talk about but there will be spoilers so I'm going to go into a more spoiler bit so if you have not read either The Cruel Prince or The Wicked King yet, highly suggest you go off and do so and come back after you read the book so we can have a nice little discussion. So yeah, there be spoilers ahead. So. Where the heck do I want to begin with this? Alright, I'm just gonna give him the first thing that comes to mind, the ghost and his betrayal. I would be greatly surprised if we didn't see the ghost again in the next book. Just, I highly doubt that he's gonna vanish without a trace and us not figure out what happened. I, I am interested to see what role he plays. Just on my reread of it, just something was really like... I don't know how to describe it, bugging me at how he phrased his reasoning for betraying Jude. He said, I served Prince Dane, not you. Served as in past tense. Now, fairies can't lie. The folk cannot lie. And just, there, I don't know, I feel there are many different ways to take that. Like, he did serve Prince Dane in the past and not Jude in the past. So those are very truthful, but they might not be the reasoning he's doing what he's doing. Who knows, maybe he has a broader reason for doing what he's doing, or maybe he didn't really betray Jude, maybe he has kind of a double cross up ahead. He helped the Undersea, but maybe he's going to help turn the tides against them. 
because we don't really know anything about the ghost thinking about it we don't have his backstory we know he has some mortal in his heritage and that he served Prince Dane before the bomb and the roach and we do know he was very loyal to Prince Dane he is the one who wanted like revenge on Balkin after the whole massacre at the coronation so I feel like he was the most loyal to Prince Dane as well so, I don't know, I feel like there could be something more to that. And also, I'm curious as what Dane did to get that kind of, like, loyalty from anyone. <laughs> Maybe I'm reading too much into things. I don't know. With Fae books, it's hard to, like, not, like, dissect everything now. <laughs> Especially when it's Holly Black writing them. <laughs> and, uh, speaking of words, Cardin and just him at the end. Out of this whole book, the ending, just, I was on edge reading that ending. Karnan marrying Jude and making her queen. There is something more to him banishing her. And I gotta read this aloud. And I believe Holly even, like, confirmed that you gotta look the wording for Jude's banishment carefully. She is exiled until and unless she is pardoned by the crown let her not step one foot in fairy or forfeit her life. Keeping uh, Holly's words in mind and just reading that, I have a feeling that since Jude is queen of fairy, she has the power of the crown behind her. She could pardon herself. There is nothing stating in that banishment that says she cannot. So I have a feeling that she's going to be able to pardon herself. And if that's the case, I'm going to be really surprised that she didn't figure it out sooner. Because, I don't know, she even shouted as she was being dragged away, You can't do that. I'm Queen of Fairy. So it's like, Jude, why, why don't you make the connection? Unless things are more complicated than that? I don't know. I'm interested to find out. Sorry for any snow blowers you hear in the background from now on. Yeah, they just decided to take it out halfway through my filming. And I'm halfway through filming, so I am not stopping for them. So I'm also interested to see what the how the Undersea reacts to a, a mortal girl being Queen of Fairy. That is going to be severely interesting. And uh, who else am I going to talk about? Vivi. I had mixed feelings on how I felt towards Vivi in this book. For a while I did feel a little sorry for her, especially after Heather left her, after her memory was returned to her from her time in Fairy. But at the same time, it's like, eh, Vivi, you were kind of asking for it. You should have been honest from her from the get-go. You should have given her time to prepare herself. You should have better prepared her for her time in Fairy. That's not something you just kind of throw on someone and expect them to take in total stride and to be able to take too naturally. I mean, it shouldn't have been up to Jude to give her all the warnings and to give her her charms. Just she, I felt she handled the situation very poorly, and I can't say I blame Heather for leaving her, even temporarily, but at the same time it's like, mm, I feel bad. <laughs> so I do hope they kind of work that out. What else? I am interested to see what kind of role Karnan's mother plays, because I, I doubt that we've seen the last of her. I doubt her sole purpose was to be kind of this informant, and then she's free, and then it's like, we forget about her. So I don't know what kind of role she could play in the future. Maybe she tries to manipulate Karnan. Who knows? Either way, I'm curious to see how that goes. The whole prophecy with uh, Ava's child. The prophecy that uh, their mother was told when she was pregnant with Vivi. I think it's pretty safe to say that we can obviously rule out Vivi because that's just too obvious for a fae prophecy. And that their mother had more than one child. It could be Jude, it could be Taryn, it could be Vivi. Like I said, I think Vivi is too obvious, so I don't think it's her. So it's going to be either Jude or Taryn. My money is actually on it being Taryn. Mostly because she's the least expected. I mean, after Vivi, Jude, I feel, is like the second most obvious, just based on like her actions, her personality, her goals. So naturally, it looks like it could be Jude. But because that's like the next obvious thing, my money is on Taryn, especially with her betrayal at the end. Oh, another reason. I don't know why I forgot this detail. Another reason why I think the ghost may not have betrayed Jude or 
betrayed her for real. Another reason I think that is because Taryn betrayed Jude at the end. She tricked Cardin into thinking she was Jude to give Murdoch the okay to take half the army away and go against the undersea. Taryn had betrayed her. And while it is possible they both could have betrayed her, Acacia said that someone you know, someone, not someones. So yeah, my money is on Taryn being the child used as a weapon, and I'm putting my money on Taryn being the one who betrayed Jude, not the ghost. And oh my god, I am also picturing a big epic showdown, not just between Jude and like Karnan, because he is gonna have some hell to pay. <laughs> Just not even that, but Jude and Taryn and Jude and Murdoch. There is gonna be hell to pay. And oh my god, I am so interested to see what happens in the Queen of Nothing. I can't think of anything else I have to say other than I hope Locke gets what's coming to him. And just, oh, his behavior, I just want to strangle him. Just Locke, I hope, gets a huge dose of karma. And just... Part of me thinks it'd be very poetic if it was Taryn who dealt out that karma. Like, it frustrates me that she went through all that to win Locke's affection, you know, betraying her sister, or being silent as he's wooing Jude, and just, I don't know, I still hate her for that. <laughs> I, I get she wants to fit in to be one of the fae, one of the folk, as much as she can. I, I sympathize with that, but same time it's like girl what are you doing you are hurting yourself you are hurting your sister and that's just messed up so just i also hope she gets like a big bite of karma too for that but walk more so because just walk is trash <laughs> and yeah i honestly can't think of anything else that i have to add those are like the main points i want to touch upon and yeah, I am super pumped for Queen of Nothing, but oh my god, it's gonna kill me to have to wait until 2020 to be able to read it and see how all this wraps up. Just, it's gonna be a long year. <laughs> and yeah, that is it for this book review. Were some parts that I didn't talk about that you guys liked, that you didn't like? Do you agree with some of my theories or thoughts? Do you disagree? Why? Why not? And yeah, that is it for this book review and I hope to see you guys next time.